Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Last week, I talked about finding one good thing to hold on to when life throws you for a loop. Please go back and listen to episode 23 if you haven't already done so. You will find some inspiration to get through tough and challenging times. Today, I want to talk about a word that is not very popular in America, at least right now, and that is integrity. Integrity. It is defined as the quality of being honest, having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, or strong adherence to a code of values or ethics. Some synonyms for integrity are character, honor, decency, goodness, honesty, righteousness, virtue, incorruptibility. I'll also share some antonyms for integrity to give you, you know, a complete picture. They are deceit, dishonesty, corruption, dishonor, disgrace. I found out that the word integris is the adjective form of the noun integrity. You may have thought like me that the adjective form, you know, was integral, but in fact, it is integris. So an integris person is a person known for his or her character and conviction. In other words, your conduct reflects your moral principles. I read somewhere that acting with integrity means understanding, accepting, and choosing to live in accordance with one's principles, which will include honesty, fairness, and decency. A person of integrity will consistently demonstrate good character by being free of corruption and hypocrisy. So in order to possess this character trait, you have to first know what your moral principles are, and then you have to be willing to consistently follow them. And you can do that by asking yourself, what do you believe? And do your actions reflect your beliefs? The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts help shape your behavior and ultimately create your reality. There's a quote, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. So how do you know if you or someone else has integrity? Well, here are five pointers that should help you make that determination. Number one, integrity is choosing to practice your values over simply professing them. Gandhi said to believe in something and not live it is dishonest. Remember I mentioned earlier that dishonesty is a word that is an antonym or the opposite of integrity. Number two, integrity is consistency of character. It is being the same person publicly and privately. You know, C.S. Lewis has been quoted as saying, integrity is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. Number three, integrity is doing the right thing, no matter what anyone else is doing, or whether or not you are rewarded. Uh, Oprah Winfrey has said, real integrity is doing the right thing, knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. Chinua Achebe says, one of the truest tests of integrity is its blunt refusal to be compromised. Number four, Integrity is when your actions match your words. Alan Cohen says you are in integrity when the life you are living on the outside matches who you are on the inside. Ralph Waldo Emerson has been credited with saying, what you do speak so loudly, I cannot hear what you say. Number five, integrity is when what you believe shows in your words, your behavior, and your lifestyle. There's a quote, people can't see what's in your heart. They can only see what you do. There's another quote, the world is changed by your example, not your opinion. You may have heard the expression, actions speak louder than words. That is true, but integrity brings balance to that truth because integrity means your actions match or align with your words. You do what you say, not just say what you'll do. Even though a life of integrity means you are the same person inside out, 
Integrity can take on different forms or show up in different ways, depending on your situation or your environment. Um, some examples of this are, you know, number one, academic integrity. Do you do your own work or copy someone else's? Do you cheat on tests? Do you credit other people when quoting them or referring to them or their work? Do you avoid dishonesty in any academic setting, including plagiarism, falsification, and fabrication? Uh, number two, financial integrity. Are you fiscally responsible? Do you manage your money well? Do you pay your debts? Do you cheat on your taxes or, or lie on your tax forms? Number three, workplace integrity. Do you show up on time for work? Do you do the job you're getting paid for? You know, if you're a supervisor, do you treat all of your employees fairly? Number four, spiritual integrity. Do you practice what you preach you know, and believe. I am a Christian and I always ask myself and, and others who profess the same belief, uh, do your enemies know that you are a Christian? Do your enemies know, not your friends, do your enemies know that you are a Christian? This is key because the Bible says we are to love and pray for our enemies. And integrity dictates that we should be a Christian in all circumstances and when dealing with all sorts of people. Number five, personal integrity. Do you consistently act on and display to others what you believe? Do you inform the cashier when he or she is, you know, mistakenly gives you too much change back? Do you own your mistakes or do you blame other people? You know, do you keep your promises and your word? You know, if you're a parent, do you tell your kids one thing while they watch you do something else? Uh, number six, relational integrity. Are you trustworthy? Do you gossip? Can you keep a secret? You know, I have a theory about secrets, and it, I believe it explains why it's so important to keep a secret confidential. And my theory is, you know, someone tells you a secret, you then tell someone you trust, they tell someone they trust, and this domino effect begins, you know, where before you know it, five or more people know the secret that was only told to one person. That, in my opinion, is a major way secrets get out because everybody has someone they trust with the secret. So remember, a secret is only a secret if you don't tell anyone. So, shh. You see, integrity is not for the faint of heart. It takes tenacity and courage to live it out loud. The courage to say no, the courage to do what maybe no one else is doing, and the courage to stand apart or alone if necessary. If you look at the word integrity, if you visually look at the word, you'll see the word grit in it, G-R-I-T, grit. And grit is defined as courage and resolve or strength of character. You know, it takes grit to have integrity. You can't have integrity without grit. You can't even spell integrity without grit. The Bible says that everything in the dark will eventually be seen in the light. A lack of integrity can cause so many problems for not just, you know, yourself, but for, for other people. You know, when you live with integrity, you don't have to con constantly look over your shoulder, peek around corners or worry that your stuff is going to catch up with you or that you will eventually be found out. You know, let the light show that to the best of your ability, with the understanding that nobody is perfect, that you try to be consistent with your character and with your moral beliefs, that you try to do the right thing, that you, you, you try to live a life of integrity. In closing, I'm going to read a few scriptures about integrity. There's a scripture that says, uh, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but the crooked man will be found out. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors will destroy them. The just man walks in integrity. His children are blessed after him. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. A good name is more to be desired than great wealth, and to be respected is better than silver and gold. The good news is integrity can be learned. You can learn how to be morally guided, spiritually led, or ethically consistent. You can learn how to follow your moral or ethical convictions by first identifying what your belief system is and then being willing to do what is right in all circumstances, even when no one is watching. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. 
Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.